Tonight on Daily Planet. Plus, inside the mouth of a gator. Woo! A really big gator. Okay, now this next story really couldn't be more different. When you're a wildlife photographer, you see the world unlike the rest of us, and that is definitely the case for Lloyd Gorodesky. Living in Florida, he understands just how important the Everglades are to the wildlife there. So he's invented something designed to coast down Miami's Biscayne Bay and grab attention in the process. You might see an alligator head or two bobbing in the bays of Florida, but chances are you've never seen one this big. Well, see you later, alligator. Make way for Lloyd Gorodesky's latest project, Gator in the Bay. Gator in the Bay is an art piece that represents the emergence and synchronicity between industry and nature. And for this Florida photographer, no other animal would do. An alligator is our, our iconic symbol of Florida, and I came up with the idea of promoting awareness for the Everglades, for our environment, by creating a large alligator. Already, 50% of their wetlands have dried up, and the Everglades are very important for Florida's ecosystem. Lloyd is hoping that this art piece will start an environmental revolution. He's doing this by using only recyclables to create his alligator. I wanted it to be uh, using components that were recycled, reclaimed, junkyard, and used materials. I wanted people to see what could be done with materials that would normally be thrown away. And uh, 7,500 square feet of material and hundreds and hundreds of bolts and welding joints to keep it assembled. But the skin is from a greenhouse or shade cloth for the roof of a greenhouse. The skin is made to look as realistic as possible. I put a heavy coat of paint, which is called alligator black. The eyes, as you see, can see the outer frame is made from a spool that's cut in half. Teeth are made of uh, housing material, the outer edge of a house trailer. So you can see we made the teeth have a little tartar on them. I wanted it to be environmentally conscious. Even the fuel used on the barge is biofuel. Today is about getting the gator from land into water. Every time you move the gator is, is, is very detailed. It takes three cranes, two land cranes, a marine crane, two flatbed trucks, a crew of over 20 people, and about 10 days worth of time. The move isn't so easy. Once we had the head assembled, we then had to disassemble it and cut it into pieces so we can transport it. Each piece rests on cement blocks in the back of a flatbed truck. Imagine following this on a highway. Once at the location, it's time to bring the head and barge together. A lot of dental work is going into that mode. There's a crane, there's generators, there's all sorts of machinery on it. And I wanted those machines to be covered. I didn't want them to be hidden, I just wanted them to be covered. I wanted people to see that when you open the jaw of the mouth, that you actually see the machines and the equipment and industry with the emergence of nature. So the the upper jaw of the alligator is made to fit on the boom of the crane and that gives motion to the piece. The lower jaw is fixed, it's built into the barge. Just like a real alligator, the upper jaw moves and the lower jaw stays stationary. With the jaws that big, the crane inside the mouth has to raise a whopping 13 and a half metric tons of recycled steel. That's the equivalent of about 37 full-grown alligators. We are on the barge we are inside the mouth of a gator. When you look along the horizon, you see all sorts of teeth coming at you. And the mouth of the jaw sort of frames the skyline that you're so used to looking in a very ordinary way. Now it becomes filled with excitement because you're inside the mouth of an alligator. Up and down, the giant jaws are working. But this is just the beginning. The gator still needs a body, and that will be a photo mosaic. Well, the body is over 100,000 photographs the size of a postage stamp. This is just one example of the detail going into that scaly skin. From far away, it looks like alligator skin, but up close, it's thousands of pictures of animals found around Florida. So when you step back and you see this huge football field-sized alligator that's floating on water, you don't really appreciate the small little components until you come up close to it. The tiles will be about five centimeters thick, made of a hard material that's very buoyant. 
Lloyd's producing them with the help of his new invention. It's a technique called Scalgio, and it allows you to print in a permanent way and not biodegradable. So unlike certain things on the planet, you want it to be dissolvable. Um, when this is floating on the, on the water, we don't want this to dissolve in any way. It'll be a little while before the alligator moves through the water in its complete form, but Lloyd can already see its impact. It's very interesting to see how people run along the shore to try to take a photo or wave to you. It's very exciting and very rewarding. And that's how I know, as an artist, it's getting the message across. The goal was to create an alligator, not a monster. So when you look at the alligator, no matter what position the mouth is, it's always smiling. So when the whole gator is complete, it's going to have these floodlights beneath the whole body with the tiles. It's also going to have lights underneath the head. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous at night. I can't wait to see this. Such thing. a cool idea. Okay, some people are comparing his gator in the bay to another art installation called Surrounded Islands by Christo and Jean-Claude. That's where the husband and wife team wrap the Miami Beach islands with pink material, as you can see, meant to simulate the blooming of flowers. You see flowers, I see Pepto-Bismol. Mm, still beautiful, and it's a project with a great message.